Okay, welcome back. So today, uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to move away from timeouts and timers. And I'd like to uh, enter a different area of FLTK and that is drawing things. So this isn't what you'd usually expect with a GUI toolkit, but FLTK does have this ability. So let's take a look at it. I think it's kind of fun and um, who knows, maybe we'll use it later. We'll see. Uh, click on drawing things here under the main page. If you go to the main page and then there's drawing things right there. And so what it says is that you can draw things in FLTK and you can do that drawing inside the draw method when you subclass widgets, whether it's uh, you know any type of a widget or even let's say for example a window. In any case, um, there's a whole bunch of types of types of things which you can draw. We're not going to get into the complicated stuff right now. I thought maybe we would start off kind of simple. And so there's you know boxes you can draw. There's a whole bunch of different things. But I thought, and of course there's the colors. Now we've seen this stuff before. Um, but if we kind of scroll down, and um, I'd like to teach how to draw a line today. And of course, if you'll see here, you can actually draw different types of lines with, with this uh, line style, but we'll get to that later. That's a little bit more um, fancy. But here are the cool ones, drawing fast shapes, okay? So in terms of fast shapes, here's uh, the one that I wanted to focus on today, and that is FL line. So if we click on that right there, it says FL line, uh, it pr you provide XY and then XY. And that draws a line from the first point to the second point. So, I mean, that can't be too hard, right? But remember, you can only draw a line inside the draw method that you override inside uh, a subclass of a widget. Right, so you have to subclass a widget first. In this case, let's let's subclass a window, for example, and uh, let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've made a program here called Line Grid, and look what it. Take a look at what it looks like. Here it is. So you can see, it just simply draws. A whole bunch of lines on the edges, on the borders, and in the middle. But essentially, I'm drawing how many lines? One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I guess it's seven. And then I'm drawing uh, another seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines there. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out how to draw the lines and where to draw them. But I will give you a hint. I did this using two loops. I drew the horizontal lines with one loop and I drew the vertical lines with another loop. And I'll give you another piece of information. My window is actually 601 by 601. I thought initially that I could get away with doing 600 by 600, but uh, for some reason, I guess because of the way the math works out, I had to make it 601 so that all the red lines showed up. And um, yeah, so remember, you're gonna have to subclass FL window and you're gonna to have to override the draw method. And when you override the draw method, you're going to have to call uh, draw on of the window first. Okay? So give it a shot, see if you could be successful with it, and then I'll show you the solution. So by the way, this has to be 
object oriented by the way right because you're gonna have to there's no other way to do this other than object oriented programming because you're gonna have to override the draw method so good luck okay uh, there is one thing I forgot to tell you and that is the distance between the lines is 100 pixels so 100 another 100 another 100 another 100 another 100 and then another 100 so in total 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that means uh, the the width of this is 601 pixels okay I needed the and one so that you could see this last red line right there okay so pause the video now and give it a shot okay so let's take a look at the code it's actually not that long so what I've done is created the class here and inheriting from FL window and um, I set the color of the window to black the background and that and that's it I'm not really drawing any widgets inside the window uh, then I go on to override the draw method and the first thing I do is I call draw on the uh, parent class which is the FL window and um, you could also uh, do it this way as well super uh, dot draw but obviously you're not going to pass self in that situation so either way is fine now I have this variable called uh, sep, which stands for separation, distance between the lines. I set the FL color, so setting this actually doesn't change the color of any specific widget. What it does is it says, use this color now to draw with in the future. By the way, uh, I do have an FL line style here, which I'm not using. I'm going to leave that for a bit later, but in Windows, if you do use the line style, you're going to have to set the color before the line style for it to work properly because if you set the color after the line style I think it'll actually uh, destroy the line style at least that's what the documentation says if we come here and um, go back so right there in the line dashes and thickness it says note because of how line styles are implemented on Microsoft Windows you must set the line style after setting the drawing color. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is still true with Windows 10. Um, another issue is that uh, I think Windows 95, 98, and ME, which nobody uses anymore, um, those apparently did not have the ability to do line styles. So, um, that doesn't really matter. So now, um, let's go back to the code. So here we are, and I've, I'm in a loop. Th these are the vertical lines. So I'm saying for X, okay, uh, that means I'm going across, okay, so the vertical line. So X is increasing, all right, and so I'm going all the way to the, um, the width, but because I have to go one beyond that, Right, in order to, because I I want it to draw at the border, which is uh, the the width, right? I want it to draw there, so therefore I have to go plus separation, and my step. Remember, in range you have like initial value, the final value, which it doesn't quite get to. That's why I have plus step here, and then the 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 third argument is the step, how big each time you're going up, right? So. Um, you know, a, a cool thing here would be perhaps if I was to uh, print X. Okay, so I found a bug in my program. See, uh, this is even a good learning experience for me. I actually didn't need plus separation here. I just needed plus one. Because you remember how Python works. The second argument, it doesn't quite get to it. So you have to add one to the second argument so that it can get to self dot width. So th that I changed. So 
I changed that also for uh, line 22 for the horizontal lines. So notice how I'm printing the line or I'm drawing the lines is I'm saying start at X and so X is increasing so it's moving horizontally. The Y is always zero. So essentially since the Y is always zero I'm drawing these red lines that go down. So I'm starting here. It's So the first point of the line starts at the top. Then the next one is at 100, right? Notice how x is one. First x is zero, right? Then it's then it's 100, and the points are that y is always zero. So it's at the it's at the starting from the top. See how here y is always zero. So now essentially, um, the the last point or the bottom point, right, is the x is still x. So that's right below the top point, but now the y point instead of being zero is the is the the total height of the window self dot h, and so that's the second point down here. It's always going to be self dot h. Okay. So and I do the same thing here. I change the color just so that you could see which loop was for uh, vertical and which loop was for horizontal, but I change the color in the second loop. And I, um, I uh, made this one yellow, okay? And you can see uh, the numbers that are printed there, and those happen throughout each loop, okay? So um, that's the solution. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with a, a small challenge today, okay? So here is the challenge. I need you to take the same program, essentially the same code, but now I've changed the window size to be 301 instead of 601, and I've changed the separation size to be 10 instead of 100 pixels. However, I want you to override this time, not just the draw method, which you've seen how to do. But in addition, I want you to override the handle method such that you capture any events which are FL shortcuts, which means it's a keyboard one. Now, I want you to capture specifically two keys, the up arrow and the down arrow. So you can't see my keyboard, but I'm gonna tell you which key I'm pressing right now. Ready, watch. I'm going to be pressing the up arrow now. And you'll see what happens. I'm not letting go. I'm keeping my finger this whole time. If I stop, there you go. But now I'll keep going until I get one box. Now the separation distance uh, should be 300. And let's take it back down. So I'm now I'm pressing uh, the down arrow on my keyboard. And so what is the minimum value that I should have? So I can take it back to approximately about 10. I guess it was somewhere around there. Now I can take it even lower. Now what's the smallest value that I can take it down to? By the way, all I'm doing is I'm subtracting and adding one with these uh, within the handle, right? Depending on which key I'm pressing. But now the minimum value, and this kind of looks cool, right? Because it looks like a solid color, but in fact, what it is, is it's actually vertical and horizontal lines that are in fact one pixel apart. Now you'll end up getting an error. You'll, your program will kind of crash a little bit if you make the separation distance uh, zero or less. So you have to have like an if statement in there catching it saying, all right, don't let it be less than one pixel in terms of the distance between the lines. But it's kind of kind of um, fun to think of a solid color as being vertical and horizontal lines that fill the entire window. So um, there you go. Give this a shot and, uh, and see if you can do it. So pause the video now.
this is kind of fun and it's a good learning experience. Okay, before I show you the solution to that, I think I actually forgot to show you the solution to the first one where I take out or I, I, I change the line style. So if I, let's say, make the line dashes that are uh, 10 pixels wide, this was for the first one, okay? Uh, and I run this, look at how cool it looks. That is so cool looking. Notice because they're 10 pixels wide, the ones on the edges uh, are kind of cut. A little bit but uh, that's so neat hey and look I can even change it again so I've changed it to a dot and let's take a look at what a dot looks like and there you go so yeah so that was from the first one uh, I forgot to I may have forgotten actually to show you how to change the line styles there okay let's go now to the solution for the second one Okay, so here is the solution. Notice that I come down here and uh, I create a variable that is an instance vari level variable uh, to the class called sep. Now this time, I actually need this separation value before I could get away with just having it in draw because I didn't need it anywhere else. But now I need this uh, separation value to exist inside draw and handle. So therefore, I need to make it an instance level variable by uh, uh, prepending it with self. And so I instantiated it inside the, uh, the init of the new class. And I gave it a default value of 10. So now here comes the, the overridden handle method. Of course, we all know you have to call handle on the parent class, right? And that's what I've done there. I've sent the event to the handle method of the parent and I, I, do, I do that using super and I get the return value. Remember, it's gonna be either zero or one because it could be another uh, event that I'm not specifically handling. So I have to return that in order for things to work properly at the end of my function. However, if it is a shortcut event, which means it's a keyboard click, right? And then I check to see, well, listen, is that keyboard, if that is that event key equal to FL up? If it is, then, and then I have to check to make sure that it doesn't go beyond the maximum size of the window, right? Increase the separation by one. And here's the cool part. I get to redraw I call dot read now you can't call dot draw directly remember that okay but you can call dot redraw which schedules a draw and I do that inside the handle so as soon as it redraw as soon as the redraw happens it comes down here and, and this function ends up being called but of course now the separation value is diff is is changed so it's so cool how handle and draw can work together in this way it, it's such a wonderful uh, example of showing the power of object-oriented programming. So here, uh, I just, just inc increase separation by one, as I said, and then, hey, I've handled it, so I return one. And if it's down, do the opposite thing, but of course, subtract one. And of course, again, with the if statement, I don't want it to be to get less than one, right? So if, if I'm, in other words, if it's two, that's good, it'll go down to one but it's not gonna go down to zero because then my program's gonna crash. Uh, and it likely up here, and now th this one doesn't, I don't have to have this be a maximum size, but I just thought, hey, you know what? If I'm gonna have a minimum size, I might as well also have a maximum size uh, because at some point, you're not really gonna see very many lines on your screen. So I thought, well, one box should be the maximum. And that's it. And so when you run this, you get that and then you can make them further apart or make them closer together depending on which arrow key you press. Hope you guys enjoyed this solution. Uh, I know I had fun uh, coding this. It's kind of cool. See you guys next time.